Hey, ever wonder why people leave this beautiful island of Puerto Rico? Well, I'm here today to let you know seven reasons why people leave Puerto Rico. Now, they could be leaving for one of these reasons, or they could be leaving for a few of these reasons. Heck, they could even be leaving for a reason we don't even know about, and we will never find out. But I'm here to tell you the most common reasons why people leave the island. Before we get into it, I do wanna mention my intentions with this video is not to talk bad about Puerto Rico. These are things that I'm mentioning that are a reality. Son la realidad de las cosas, okay? These are facts, some opinions obviously, and you are entitled to your opinion, but please let's respect that. This is to talk about it, learn about it, and the more we face them, the better it is because we will do something about it. This is made for people that are not from here, you know, that they want to know about Puerto Rico and they want to move to Puerto Rico or people that have not, you know, been here in a while. So you could be proud and see the reality of things. And now that we got all that out of the way, let's start with the juicy stuff. Now my list is in no particular order, but I do believe that the first one is the big the big reason why people leave Puerto Rico and is financial opportunities. And this involves, you know, getting a better job, better pay, better opportunities. Why? Because you are underpaid in Puerto Rico. It doesn't matter what profession, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, a dentist, a nurse. You could go to college or not go to college. You could do a master's and you're going to be underpaid if you compare yourself to the States. Obviously, if you compare yourself to a third world country, you're good, but you know, we want better, right? So we're going to compare to the better. I think that a lot of people, you know, get disappointed with the lack of opportunities. So they finish college and there's no jobs or there's no good paying jobs. So they can see that they can leave. So like, why not? I know someone that graduated as a nurse and you know, she's getting better pay at Walgreens than she is as a nurse. So it's just like this lack of opportunity here is it's really weighing us down so people are forced to leave their beautiful home here and go try and do better it happened to me i did my degree here in puerto rico and there was no jobs and what did i do i left but ironic here i am again and if you are new here you want to know why i left puerto rico in 2003 you might want to check this video out now the next one which is the second one i might have a lot to say because this is my field <laughs> or was i have a bachelor's and a master's in education so we're going to talk about education i believe the public school system here is very low quality and very sad to be honest there's tons of things wrong with it but let's just go step by step here i think right now because of the earthquakes and hurricane maria it just made it worse because hurricane maria made schools close down because you know they were like falling apart and the earthquakes as well with covid it's just even worse because you know with the remote learning it's like kids are not learning and they just some of them don't have computers and it got worse so what's wrong with the public school system here you may ask okay so let's start with no materials the classes are too large so too many kids which is hard for the teacher hard for the students to learn um, no technology. There's no smart boards like in the States. There's no laptops for every child and iPads. There's no internet for the schools here. So it's just insane how I used to see schools in New York and to compare them to here, it's like, wow, like, wow. Schools are closing, as I mentioned, and the schools that are open, they are not well kept. The maintenance is terrible. Um, the infrastructure is terrible. And there's so many special ed kids. Like it's, it's, it's known that there's so many of them and it's just hard to place them, where to place them. The standardized tests show that kids are not doing well. And I know a lot of people don't believe in those tests, but let's talk about because we have them. Those standardized tests are showing that the education here is not good. And one of the problems is that politicians are not prioritizing education. These funds that are supposed to go to schools, are they really going to schools? Or are they buying a Mercedes? Who knows? And the people in charge here, you know, up there in the ranks, they don't, they don't seem to care. Or if they care, they don't dare to step out of the box and be like, hey, let's make changes. Let's do this. Let's do that. They're just waiting for the time to, you know, retire or to get the next position. And 
they're really not in it. I went to public school here many, many years ago, and I don't think it was that bad. I mean, I might be wrong, it's all relative, right? But I think now it's just like way worse than it was before. I feel bad for the people that need to put their kids in public schools. And what is the solution? Well, if you could afford private school, you put your kids in private schools. What do the politicians do? They put their kids in private school. Private schools here are pretty good, and they always have been, so if you could afford it, you put them in private schools. Now, I do recommend that if you have kids and you're thinking about it, where to put them, to put them in a school where everything is English. They have tons of them here where all the subjects are in English and everything is in English, taught in English. That gives the kid the opportunity that when he's a grown up, if he wants to leave to the States, he is going to be fully bilingual. So that is a great thing. Now, another education issue is that some degrees are not being offered here. So obviously they can't offer everything, but for those that want to study a certain thing and they don't offer it here in Puerto Rico, they have to go to the States or anywhere to study whatever they want to study. Now, I feel like that has changed a little bit here. For example, there was no chiropractor school here. So if you wanted to be a chiropractor, you had to leave. But now they opened a chiropractor school in Bayamón, I believe it is, a few years ago. And now there's chiropractor school. I do see more universities out here. So I think it's getting a little bit better. Government corruption. I need to drink water for this one. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot to say about this because this is very popular here. Everyone knows that the government here is corrupt. You know what? I want to read something because I read this in an article and it just described it so well that I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to use this. It says political system here in Puerto Rico is broken. Politicians are corrupt or incompetent with poor management. You know, I couldn't describe that better. So what is wrong with the politicians? So from what I have read and what I think is that they receive funds, right? Federal funds, whatever funds they get, and they are not using it the way they are supposed to. So let's say they get money to fix the streets, the potholes. So, oh, let's fix a few potholes and then give ourselves a huge salary increase you know so i think it's something like that where like they use some of the money for good and then pocket the rest so that's what a lot of people think that is happening with the government here i don't know if you recall the secretary of department of education which you know is high up there julia kelleher or keller not sure how you say it julia let's call her julia Julia was arrested in 2019 for stealing millions of dollars in uh, federal contracts. And she took the money for herself, okay? So <laughs> the FBI indicted her and gave her six months of prison, one year of house arrest, and she paid a fine of like $21,000. And so this is the problem. They just get a slap on the wrist and that's it. Like, I don't know, they need bigger punishments. The next secretary, she'll probably do it too. And it gets better. Who had appointed Julia for that position? Ricardo Rosselló. Ricardo Rosselló was the governor that was in a chat scandal and thousands of people protested on the streets and got him to resign. So can we even trust these politicians? They all know each other there's no serious consequences and it's like there's no government accountability the next one is healthcare system and i appreciate we even have a healthcare system here believe me but we could do better i feel like it's a bit slow and a little bit outdated for example if you need a specialist like a dermatologist and you call i having a rash everywhere it's like oh sorry new patient oh i can't see you for two to three months so it's like what do you do so things like that in the metro area might be a little bit better but you still need to wait for some of the things hospitals here are not that great poor quality poor maintenance short staffed too many patients a lot of malpractices overall people prefer to go to private hospitals because public hospitals are not good
And if you have the federal funded health care, which is called La Reforma, with La Reforma, you need a referral for everything. Basically, you go to the doctor, then you go to the specialist, then you got to go back to the doctor to get the x-ray. Like, it's just a referral for every single thing. And it's a lot of coming and going, going to the doctor and things like that. A lot of people do not have health insurance because they're not poor enough to get La Reforma but then they don't have money to pay for their own. That's why a lot of people prefer not to work here because, and that's one complaint that a lot of people say, it's like, nobody wants to work here. Well, because they get free healthcare, food stamps, and even housing. So it's like, well, of course they don't wanna work. The next one is unreliable utilities. So let's talk about water and electricity. There are power outages all the time. Like some people once a day, maybe once a week. Lucky enough, I don't lose power that often. I'm in a section where if we lose it, maybe it's like once a month and maybe for like a few hours, they restore it pretty quickly, but that's not the case for everybody. A lot of people in the mountains or like in the countryside, they don't get it for days and it's horrible. And some people, when they lose power, they lose automatically the water as well. So imagine losing both at the same time. And if you have a condition that you need a machine to breathe or you have a medication that needs to be in the fridge, imagine the power goes out and the water goes out and you're sick and it's just crazy. Not only that, but like people are struggling to buy food sometimes. And it's like you buy food and then the power goes out for two days and you gotta throw away all that food. So is that even fair? And on top of that, the electric company keeps increasing the monthly bills every couple of months. So you lose power, yet they increase it. Like it should be the opposite. They should be giving you discounts because you're losing food, you're losing a bunch of stuff. And unfortunately, not everyone can afford a solar system or a cistern. The next reason why people leave Puerto Rico is the cost of living. The cost of living here is getting pretty expensive. Cars are more expensive, food is more expensive, Sales tax here is one of the highest in the whole United States of America. So pretty much everything is expensive. So if you think, oh, Puerto Rico, it's a lot of poverty. So everything must be cheap. No, no, everything is pretty expensive here. So underpaid, everything more expensive. Make that make sense. The last one is natural disasters. A lot of people have been displaced due to Hurricane Maria, other hurricanes before that. And I'm sure we will have more hurricanes and we'll displace more and make people leave Puerto Rico. Like that's just the way it is. Imagine getting your house blown or destroyed and then there's floods as well. And then earthquakes is the new thing now, like we're California. Those natural disasters displace people and you know, their houses are destroyed and they see no other option than to, you know, go somewhere else. Now I know some of you will ask, Anna, why you didn't include crime on this list? And it's because when I asked around, no one said crime. During my research, it barely came up. I think when it comes to crime, it's not such a common reason why people leave Puerto Rico. Before you go, did you know that according to the census, the population in Puerto Rico was at a decline? It was going down back in 2019 and 2020. However, 2022, there is a rise, it's going up. So either a lot of people are coming back to Puerto Rico or new people, I'm not sure, maybe gringos, but we're getting a lot of people apparently in 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't offend anybody. This is just talking about real facts and real issues here in Puerto Rico and entertaining you at the same time. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. When they receive money, people protest. Oh my god, I'm getting hungry and tired. It's gonna be hard. It'll be hard to explain this because I get passionate and I'm like, I want to cry. I'm here. The pub, the public school system, the school system. No crying in baseball. Bloody! It's so unfortunate. It's fortunate. It's if you have the money to put them in public. In sorry. Those, those were, we have had Mary, Mary, Mary.